Thank you. So today we will be talking about leveraging the power of Django REST framework with HEMX. Uh, so I am Emma. I've been doing open source in Python and Django for a long time. Uh, probably not Django for 20 years. 20 years ago, Django did not exist. Uh, but I do use a lot of Django REST framework and I'm a member of the PSF and the PSF. I also maintain a few open source libraries, including uh, the RF schema adapter. And I recently started working with Torchbox. Uh, so Torchbox is an employee-owned agency. It is uh, responsible for creating Wagtail. And its purpose is to empower positive change makers. Uh, if you want to copy the link and you're looking for a job, uh, Torchbox is hiring for now. And so here we're to talk about Django. So uh, I hope everybody's familiar with Django. If you have never used Django, please raise your hand. Okay, so strap in, you're in for, for a ride. Uh, but, uh, well, Django is a web framework and uh, a lot of people like Django for its admin. Uh, the admin in Django is great for creating a proof of concept to uh, whenever you have to manage a, a list of anything like uh, in accounting software, in the hotel booking software, anything that where you got a list and you have to sort it and paginate it and filter it. Django admin is really great at doing that. Um, and uh, with Django, there is also Django REST framework. And uh, as the name implies, it's there for helping you building REST APIs. Um, and um, who has never used Django REST framework here, except for the people who never use Django? OK, so just a few. So Django REST framework uh, helps you build uh, APIs. It comes with something called view set that gives you um, a single place to create a whole CRUD API endpoint. So um, it also has pagination filtering and all that uh, built in. Uh, it uses Django filters for that. And now uh, finally, HTMX. So I'm, ex I'm expecting that maybe I will see more hands. Who has never used HTMX before? Okay, so that's a, a lot of you. So HTMX is advertised as the uh, JavaScript last front front end framework, and uh, it is uh, a library that lets you do uh, things uh, like this piece of code, where you just add uh, parameters you, to your uh, HTML, and with those uh, hx dash attributes, you can tell the browser to do something. And so here you have an hx dash get, and that will say, hey, make an hx request to the backend. And when you get the response, well, replace some part of my HTML with that response. So it's not expecting JSON, it's expecting HTML. Uh, and with various uh, different attributes, like here we have uh, HX swap sw that tells it how to swap thing, and HX target that tells it what to replace, and also HX uh, push URL, which um, tells it, hey, also replace the URL in the browser. So when uh, I click on that link, URL is going to change and I'm going to be able to just hit refresh and have that, that same page show up. Um, but you probably all seen this quote, uh, serverless is a lie, it's someone else's computer. Uh, JavaScriptless is a lie, it's just somebody else's JavaScript. The library itself is written in JavaScript. Um, um, but back to Django a little bit right now. So I told you it was great, uh, Django admin, to, to, to build uh, MVPs, proof of concepts, and so on. But once you have to, to deliver your application to, to the client, often they, they will want a different look than the Django admin, because maybe they don't have the same test as us, who 
think that the Django admin looks great, or maybe because they want to, to do some branding on it and they want to put their logo, or they, they want to, to give it a, a better UX. And so there's been a, a lot of packages that have been doing that. So this is uh, Django admin bootstrap that's uh, maintained by uh, Douglas Miranda, and he's doing a great job of maintaining it because this is really complicated to, man to maintain because the Django admin uh, HTML template is, uh, it doesn't really have an API and it changes a lot. So for every release of Django almost, you have to make change to uh, that sort of packages. Um, and this is another one that changes the look of Django admin. Uh, this is Django Capelli. It's probably the oldest reskin of Django that I've ever seen. You know, it's not just a reskin, it does other things to you, but um, um, it's, um, it's another one. And here's yet another one, and this one is more interesting for us because this is uh, Django Admin 2 and it is class-based views. And so since it's class-based views, it's re really easily extendable and customizable, and with that you can, uh, it, when you need something from the admin that's not in the admin, it's easy for you to add it in because it's just regular Django classes. While in the admin, the admin, not every API is documented in the admin and you might struggle finding your way around. And here you can do that with Django Admin 2, except uh, while Django Admin 2 uh, is now maintained by Jazzband, that maintains the legacy uh, applications that nobody else wants to maintain, and so newer versions of Django are not supported by Django Admin 2. Um, and to come back to Django REST Framework, this is Django REST Framework attempt at uh, changing the admin, and this is uh, the DRF admin render that uses DRF to uh, render an admin-like interface. And uh, it is seldom used, uh, as far as I can tell, but this is something that you can get out of the box from Django REST Framework. And you just have to change some configuration and you get something that looks like this. Um, but that bring, brings us to the question, what are renders for Django REST Framework? So Django REST Framework is th this framework that lets you create views and view sets and things like that, and, and you, you produce a response. And that response, a lot of the time you will want to make it appear as JSON because you want your React application to, to load it or something like that. But JSON is not the only way that you can render that. You can use another renderer. Uh, you can format whatever comes out of your views as you want, and you can format that um, to make it available to the particular application that uh, is going to use it. If your particular application that is going to use it is not React, but is written in Java, you probably want XML instead of JSON. Uh, and uh, that's where renderers come in. You can use uh, renders to uh, specify exactly the format that you want. And uh, if, if you've been using Django REST framework at all, you've been using renders. The two most common renders that, you're, that you've been using is the JSON render, and the browsable API render. The browsable API render takes exactly the same output as the JSON render, but it outputs it in HTML and lets you interact with it uh, in a nice way. But there are lesser known um, Django uh, DRF renders. Um, there is the form render and its counterpart for multi-port forms, and this is, you probably know it too, because if you're in the, uh, in the browsable API uh, and you try to uh, post the form, uh, you can have either raw HTML or a form-like thing. The form-like thing uses uh, that render. Uh, but you have XML render, like we said. There's also CSV renders. Exporting things to CSV is something that we are asked all the time, uh, more, more often than we'd like. And there's, actually, there's a render for that. You can just use your DRF API to do that. But there's an even less known uh, DRF render, and this is the template HTML render. And um, <clears throat> this one just uses a template, like uh, regular Django class-based views are using a template. You can use 
uh, this to take a template and render whatever is outputted from your view. And you can use it alongside with other renders, like with the JSON render and the XML render, and you can have your HTML render that lives alongside with it. So why would you want to use that uh, compared to Django's regular class-based views? Well, um, this, if you are using this, this means that the same, with the same code, the same view code, you can render both HTML and JSON or whatever your API needs to render. Um, and that way you only need to write your code once, which if you're using Django class based views and DRF, well, you have to write your code twice, so you will do something, maybe you will create a service that creates the thing and the views are going to call that service or something. But uh, with Django REST Framework, you only need to write your code once. And also Django REST Framework provides things that the class-based views in Django don't provide. It has pagination, sorting, filtering, ordering, and once again, you write one view set and you have a whole thread application. Um, there are issues though with uh, using Django REST framework to render HTML. Um, the view or the view set in, in Django REST framework, usually they, they spit out a dictionary that will be, that is intended to be transformed into JSON. But it's not an object, so you cannot say like, my list dot count to have the count of record in that list. You cannot say uh, record dot category dot name because record is just record dot category is just going to be a, a string. Um, this can be annoying, but this also prevents you for doing from doing n plus one queries by mistake. Um, <clears throat> But still, JSON types are really limited. You, we only have a few types if, in JavaScript. We have strings, numbers, dates, uh, booleans, and I'm forgetting, but they're there. Uh, so what would a template look like uh, for list, for example, if you were to write that for uh, DRF using the uh, HTML template vendor? Well, it would look like this, which is basically exactly the same as it would look for Django. And if you, if you have that code, and you look at the result, you get something like this, which is exactly like what you would have in a Django class-based view. Switching tabs is not going to be easy for me. Um, but yeah, um, so we need a break. This is, this is my cat, her name is Shell, and she's clearly not impressed with that. Because, well, we've been talking for a while now and this is just simple Django. So how can we impress Shell? Um, it would be more impressive if there was a way to build that automatically. Right now, the code I showed you, it was just taking the fields uh, that we knew and that meant that you had to write that list view for every single different thing. But uh, the, the, the template can know about the fields uh, automatically uh, for different reasons. First of all, uh, because we're still in Django while we're uh, running the render, and uh, second of all, because somebody wrote uh, something that's called the RF schema adapter, and that's a library that has two focus. One, it, uh, it allows you to create endpoints that wrap uh, view sets and serializer, so you just create your endpoint and it will create the other classes for you. And the second focus of that library is to create some metadata about your class, and usually you would do an option call on a, on a regular JSON uh, rendered uh, DRF view to have that, that data, but you can inject that data uh, directly into the template thanks to the, the H, a specific HTML render. Um, and so we could just do that. And if we do that, I have to switch screen again. And if, if we do that, we can have something like this. 
um, from uh, the code that was on the screen that just it gave list display. So if I look here at my template, and, to and toggle the context, you see that in the metadata, we have uh, things that are provided by Django REST framework uh, by default, but if we scroll down and down and down, uh, we, we can see that now we have a list of fields and we also have some word on there, this display. Yeah, we have list display that I declared in my endpoint and now we have this list display available in the in, in the template and so I can just loop over the list display and uh, I can show that. <clears throat> and this is my other cat fruit and he's still not impressed. <laughs> uh, so we need to fix that. But because we're inside Django REST framework, we can quite easily impress him because now we can uh, do searching uh, directly and we can do pagination also. Um, and going back to the other screen. Can somebody see my mouse? Yes, good. So now if I reload this, I'm going to, to hide the, the debug toolbar. Oh, there is a there is a search bar. And if I type something, oh this works. I've got search. I just had one line of code to write to have search. And I have it and it's working. And, and I also have pagination. And, and, and that works out of the box because this is Django REST framework in the back and so Django REST framework allows us to do that. And so since this is Django REST framework, why, why stop there? We could do other things, and, and look, this is Ella, this is not really my cat, this is my roommate's cat, but uh, she, she looks very interested. She wants to know more. So let's, let's do more, let, let's, do, let's add some uh, other things like filter fields and ordering fields. And so, I, I lost my pointer again. Um, If, if I go back here now, I, I, I've got more things. And I can filter and I say, I want to only see videos. Um, come on, why is this not working? Because this is a demo, so why, why would it work? Of course it doesn't work. Uh, let me refresh the page. Okay, so um, we have filtering, and there is nobody that's using that brand, so, um, and nobody else using that brand, so let, let, let's try the, that, that one again. Yes, now that works. So that was a demo effect. So now I've got filtering, and what else did I add? Oh, I added uh, sorting, and so now I can do sorting, and that's, all just uh, Django REST framework in the back end. Um, and you might have seen, because I, I put my, my internet connection as slow 3G. So you, you probably have had the time to notice that, in fact, when I'm doing something, uh, it does a regret. And only the, the, the center of the screen changes, only my list changes. And depending what you are doing, uh, you, you might have, you might need to, to refresh different parts of the screen. If I'm 
changing a filter, I'm going to not only have to change the list of records, but I'm also have going to have to change the number of pages and the number of records. Now, if I'm just changing the, the ordering, I don't need to change the number of records. It's the same number of records. So there are all these little parts of the, of the template that are changing it, that I need to get uh, some or more of them. And uh, this is something that is uh, clearly not built into uh, Django REST framework or, um, or HTMX. Um, and so we need to tell the renderer which parts we need to, to have. And if you, uh, for the ones that are in the front, you might have seen that in the URLs, that I, when I'm clicking in the URLs, there is a parameter that says um, partials equals and gives a list of partials. Because uh, right now, this is the only trick I found to, to do that. It's, it's a bit hacky, but it works. Um, and another problem that we might have is uh, when we are doing uh, something in Django, in, in, in regular Django, when we are updating a record or when we are deleting a record, we are expected to be redirected after that to the list of records. Um, but Django REST framework doesn't do that. When you do a put request on Django REST framework, it, it replies with 200 OK, and that's it. Uh, it updates your thing. So you you do have to, to find a trick to do that. And if I want to do that, I can try to do that. Okay, come on. Uh, so uh, my, 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 my uh, presenter, my, my room manager speaks Dutch, so I'm not going to delete Dutch, I'm going to delete French. Um, oh, it's asked me, are, am I sure that I want to delete French? Yes, I'm sure that I want to delete French, I know French is deleted, and it thinks it's refreshed automatically. And if I go, and, and I'm going to keep being nice, and I'm going to, to go and edit uh, Dutch, and I'm going to enable Dutch. And no, I up, and I'm redirected, and this is magical, and this is not Django REST framework, uh, because Django REST framework doesn't do that. Uh, but uh, with HTMX, we can add directly in the response headers. We can add HX location that will redirect your browser, and it will not redirect the whole page. It will redirect whatever thing you say is a target that you want to redirect. So once again, it will only uh, load uh, the part of the page that you're interested in. And um, <clears throat> by doing that in the renderer, you can intercept and say, okay, uh, no, I know that it delete, update, and whatever else you want, and you say, okay, I want to redirect those when they are successful. Um, but there's yet another issue. There's error message. In Django REST framework, if you try to do a put on a uh, on a record to update the record, and the values you 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 said there are not valid, what's going to happen? You're going to get a 400 error, and you're just going to get your errors. And if you replace your form with errors, that's not going to to work really well. Uh, but it turns out that HTML can be configured to uh, read two uh, things other than 200. And the template, the default template in, the, uh, in Django REST Frameworks HTML template renderer can be uh, customized. So we, we, we are able to, um, to render those after all. So if I go back here and I'm trying to say that English actually is not a thing and I try to update, well, I get an error message here at the bottom. That's not very, that's not a really nice UX. It would be better if the name field was the one appearing in red and so on. And uh, remember when I said that uh, HTMX was JavaScript less? Well, if you want to have a nice UX, you're going to have to, to write JavaScript. But you, you can intercept the error message, and, and you can write for JavaScript. And, and maybe um, 
you can try another uh, JavaScript, less JavaScript framework, which is um, um, Alpine.js. But I'm not going to talk about Alpine.js other than just mentioning really small at the bottom of the screen. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so this brings us into the bonus content. So I managed to do it. Uh, <laughs> so um, there's uh, something when when you look at at, the, at, at those things, um, the form there. There's two ways to to render the form the form that you just saw. You, there is the uh, DRF uh, form serializer that I mentioned in the beginning. And to use the DRF form serializer, you just say. Uh, I don't remember what you say, but it's, it's something like you pass in uh, the serializer and you there is a, um, a template tag to transform that serializer directly into a form. And that gives you a form, but oftentimes when you want to make pretty forms and things like that, you would like to, to be able to, to change that. And uh, Django doesn't encourage you to do that. Um, Django usually tells you, yeah, you can just put form, and if you want to do something better than that, yeah, well, use crispy forms, and if you and then with crispy forms you can do fields and things like that. But if we think a bit differently, we have remember the meta information I, I showed you when I scrolled and I scrolled and I scrolled. It was a list of fields, so we have fields. We can include templates, so we could have widgets, we could have form widgets, and once we have form widgets, then when we just have to say, hey, this field after all, it's not that type of widget, it's another widget, and then you can, re you can um, make something really advanced with just HTML, HTMX, Django, Django REST framework. Um, and also, it's really easy to customize something like that because uh, if you do uh, if you do Django REST framework, you you might know that if you create a method on a view set, you can say you can put the decorator at action, or if you do this in in the REST schema adapter, you have custom actions and you have wizards that have serializer linked to them and things like that. And in the meta, you also have a list of all the actions and so on. So you could have easily add buttons for each row in a list, for example, or add more button than just update on a form. So this is all things that are possible to do. Um, but uh, now I feel like I've been talking a lot, so this is my last cat, Curry, and he's fallen asleep. Uh, so if I don't want you to fall asleep, I should stop talking. But if you found this interesting and you want to either help make it a library or if you want to try it for yourself, come see me during the sprint and we can uh, work into making that well, more public than it is right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Uh, although maybe your own cats uh, weren't very interested, I, I, I was very, at least. Thank you. Um, do we have some questions in the room? Because I think we still have uh, one, room for one. All right. Uh, how would you convince your client or boss why should you include HTMX into Django Admin? In other words, which business need does it solve? Why is it why it's something which is not possible with normal Django Admin? Uh, so, uh, it depends what your boss wants you to do. If your boss says, oh, we should invest in this brand new React application because there are things that need to happen dynamically and Django doesn't do that out of the box, uh, then you can tell your boss that creating a new uh, React application to, for their needs is going to cost them uh, two, three, five months of development, while adding HTMX can be done uh, just bit by bit, and you can uh, add uh, the piece that you need right now for just half a day of development, maybe. So, money. <laughs> Great summary. <laughs> then with that, if you have any further questions, please DM Emma directly, uh, or put it on the Discord. Uh, please take also your litter with you, and enjoy the rest of the, of the conference. Another round of applause.